In this video, we're going to take a look at a method of proof called direct proof. So in a direct proof, essentially we are just going to assume that the antecedent is true and then use the rules of inference, axioms, definitions, etc., to show that the consequent is true. So we're assuming P is true, we're proving, excuse me, proving Q is true. So that is our goal. We did this a little bit already when we talked about the rules of inference. We did a direct proof um, and it was a formal direct proof. So for each and every step, we gave the axiom or rule that we used in order to prove it's true. So on the next uh, couple of examples that we're going to do together, these are going to be direct proofs, but they are going to be informal proofs. Let's do our first direct proof together. So we are to prove if n is an odd integer, then n squared is odd. Now keep in mind, whenever we're dealing with a direct proof, which is what we're doing, we're essentially looking at our propositional logic. We're saying if p then q, we're assuming p is true. So it's good to think about that when you're starting a proof like this. In this case, I've got an if then. And so it's pretty clear that this is p and this is q and therefore this is an if p then q, it's an implication. So when I go about proving this, remember I'm going to assume then that p is true. That's a direct proof. Now before I get started on this, I want to talk to you about two definitions that you may or may not be familiar with, but you're going to use them all of the time. When we're dealing with things like even and odd, we need ways to re-express those so that we can manipulate them in proofs or equations. If I'm dealing with an even integer, let's say n is even. If n is even, I can re-express n as two times k, where k is some other integer. And of course, the reason I can do that is if you have an even integer, the definition of an even integer is that it can be divided by two and the result is another integer with no remainder. If I have an odd integer, say n is odd, n can then be re-expressed as 2k plus 1, because obviously if we take an even integer and we add 1, we get an odd integer. And again, k must be an integer as well. So now that we have everything we need, let's start this proof. When we start a direct proof, we assume p is true. So I'm going to assume n is an odd integer. Based on that, then I'm going to use my definition of an odd integer that says then n equals 2k plus 1, where k is some other integer. And now I'm going to go about proving Oh, and I can say that by definition, oops, got a little extra something in there, by definition of an odd integer. So from there, I'm going to say, where am I trying to get to? I'm trying to say n squared is odd. So if n is 2k plus 1, then I'm going to square each side because I'm trying to get to n squared. So that gives me n squared equals, and then of course I'm going to FOIL this out, so please don't give me 4k squared plus 1 because I just, I can't even. This is 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. So FOIL it out. When you do that, you get 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. And that still doesn't help me because what I'm trying to get to is to say that n squared is odd. Now, how am I going to show it's odd? Well, lucky for us, we have a definition of what an odd integer looks like. So I'm going to continue by taking a two out of my first two terms, 2k squared plus 2k plus one. So from here, I'm feeling pretty good because this does seem to be in the correct format, but a lot of people don't like that because there's still kind of a lot going on here. So quite often what you'll see is n squared equals 2r plus 1, 
where r equals 2k squared plus 2k, and r is an integer. So now what have I done? Now I've said, hey, I've done all of this work. I have found that my n squared gives me an odd integer. So at the end, I'm just going to summarize what I have found. And what I have found is therefore n squared is odd. Now, again, those three little dots mean therefore, and a lot of times you'll see then a square at the end of a proof, which is basically saying, hey, I'm done. You might see a little triangle at the end of your proof, or you might see QED. QED um, is essentially a Latin phrase that is, says something like, what was to be demonstrated, and so essentially we're saying we demonstrated what was to be demonstrated. Here's another proof for us to try, and it's always a good idea to challenge yourself, so if you'd like, go ahead and press pause and try this one on your own. But remember, when I'm doing something with a direct proof, I'm looking at that if p then q, and this one isn't really written in that format. So if it's helpful to you, not a bad idea to think about what this would look like as an if then. So it says the sum of two even integers is even. So if I add two even integers, then the sum is even. Something to that effect is how I could write this as an if then statement, which means that I've got two even integers, which is p, and I'm adding them together and getting a sum that's even is q. So for p, I'm basically going to say I have two even integers. So when I get started on my proof, I'm going to say assume a and b are even integers, which is essentially what this is saying. Now, I didn't include the add, but that's okay because over here, sum implies that I'm adding. So assume a and b are even integers. Guess what I'm going to do next? Exactly what I did last time. Then a equals 2k for some k that is an integer and b equals 2m for some m that is an integer. Now, keep in mind, I have to have different variables for those two. I can't just assume they're the same variable because that would be assuming that a and b are the exact same even integer. So these, this is allowing for any possibility of two even integers. So that's what I did next. Now from here, I'm going to focus on the math part of it. It says I'm adding the two even integers. So I'm going to take a plus b and say a plus b is the same as 2k, because that's what a was, and 2m, because that's what b was. Now I can rewrite this as 2k plus m, again using the distributive property, and then I can rewrite that as 2r, where r is equal to k plus m, and r is an integer. That was a bad z, but you get the idea. So what I have said is when I'm adding these two even integers, I get some other even integers. So therefore, the sum of two even integers is even. QED. I would encourage you to continue practicing the method of direct proof on your own, but for us, we're going to move on to our next method of proof, which is proof by contraposition.